Pública. Hello and welcome to Issues and Answers, a production of the Government Information Service and the National Television Network. I am your host, Kendall Eugene, and with me we have two fine gentlemen and we will be discussing issues surrounding youth and the answers that they have for it. Welcome Mr. George Sinqua and uh, Mr. Stanley Stevens. Stanley Stevens is the coordinator of the Youth Power Group and of course George Sinqua, one of the senior members of the YPG. Welcome to the show. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, uh, before we get into YPG and what it is all about, uh, let us um, know a little bit about yourself. Tell us about um, who Stephen is and uh, who Sam Kwa is. Well, basically, um, my name is Stanley Stephen. A special good morning to all of you watching us right now. Well, before attending the YPG, I was someone who was very rebellious to my mother. Mm -hmm. And um, I saw my, my mother, my home, was growing up broken everything started within my house okay and my mother she used to work hard very hard and like she didn't earn anything and because of that i grew a little anger against her you know because i saw my brothers had the best because they knew their father and i myself didn't know my father mm -hmm. his physical appearance and because of that it grew anger inside of me and then it grew with hatred and i hated my mother i even wish she was dead and I wish she was dead so I can be free to do everything that I want. And because of that, I ran away from home three times. I took my clothes. I went by my eldest brother. Mm -hmm. And she came back looking for me and brought me home, as what all mothers does. And I was always troubled. I don't wanted to be around my brothers because we used to fight all the time. And this led me to even follow bad company. I started to smoke, I started to drink, I started to stay out and party. And I started even walking with knives on the street. Uh, I never had the courage to even stab somebody. But just for me to have, like, you know, because I see my friends doing it, I mm -hmm. want to do it also. Mm -hmm. So everywhere I go, I used to go with the knife. I used to follow my friends. Whatever they do, I used to do. It was not just my intention to do it. But because of them, I used to do it also. So from a young age, you basically grew up as a troubled um, yes, young man. Yes, from the age of 12 years, I started doing all this. Okay. So normally when people say, tell me about yourself, you would hear the stories of, you know, I grew up in that community, I right. was with my friends playing, but mm -hmm. for you, it was totally different. Totally different, yes. What, where did you grow up? Well, uh, my family originated from um, Ancillary, mm -hmm. but most of my youth age, I stayed with in Marsha, back okay. at side. Mm -hmm. and. I know everyone says that this area is a bad area, but I don't believe like the area is a bad area. It's the people mm -hmm. that is in the area, what they are doing, mm -hmm. what they put their strength to do. And because of that, I follow the difference and I, I end up being in these kinds of things that I, I didn't want it to be mm -hmm. in, but because I saw my friends doing it and I didn't find the love I fought that was in my family, I found it with my friends. Oh, okay. All right. Um, George, what about you? Well, um, with me, I did not raise up with, you know, the, 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 the violence in terms of knives, etc. you know. Mm -hmm. I, my story, I raised up poor. You know, um, growing up, it was very difficult because I was the, the eldest. You know, and normally when you are the, the eldest, you get the life the hardest. You know, um, you know what, when you used to go to school, I remember going to school with a nylon bag to put my books. Mm -hmm. That's how bad it was. I remember going to school with the Chinese shoes. And then when you were in school, you were getting a kind of jokes from the children. Mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know, going sometimes with the bata slipper. I know if people remember this bata slipper that always had that kind of stench. I'm sure there are a few uh, boys right now that have PTSD from the bata slipper. That <laughs> was the rod of punishment for quite a few. Oh, yes. You know, and through, through time, you know, through that life, I could not focus in school, mm -hmm. you know, because the worst thing is when you're in a classroom and the teacher is trying to teach something and you are hungry, you are more focused on where you're going to get something to eat than focus on what they're writing on, on the board. So I could not focus in school. My grades were, I was always an F. If they could have given me Z on my paper, I would have got a Z. Mm. That's how I, I, I perform in school, you know, and as time passed by, I, I, I left school from the age of 15 because I wanted to work. 
you know, I wanted to help my mother, mm -hmm. you know, and at that time I had brothers and sisters that were, that were younger than me, mm -hmm. you know, and I wanted to see how I can assist, you know, my mother. And I took up the responsibility of being, I would say, a father role very young. I did not basically have a childhood. From 15 years, you know, I am already going to work trying to bring in the money to pay the bills to make groceries, you know. And as time passed by, I did not even know that I was depressed, you know. And what opened up my eyes is when my son <laughs> was depressed as well. You know, and this is, I'm, I'm wondering, okay, I keep on holding all of this inside. People see me, you know, people, then I started, I end up as a performer. Because for me, I was just trying to get myself out to move the focus of the life that I was living. Even if that I, I started working early, but I still did courses, mm -hmm. you know, to just open up my understanding, you know, just for me to have a little knowledge of what is to come. You know, and then I started writing to the, the words I was writing is basically what I was feeling inside of me. And then I, I don't even know how I started writing soca music. Yeah, because you know? remember you as one of the more prolific soca performers of um, the uh, late 2000s, heading, what? yeah, early 2000s, 2000, heading yeah. into the late 2000s. Yeah. Um, before we jump into that part of your life, um, you said you grew up um, poor. And also you, um, Stanley, you said you also had that um, growing up as well, you yes. grew up poor. But you two have totally contrasting childhoods, whereas okay. you, d you were um, unfortunately following the bad company, you mm -hmm. decided you were going to work right. and you wanted to bring in um, income into the house. Right. Okay, I wanna, you gave us your reason why, because you didn't feel love at home and you were looking for that love. But what about you, George? Why did you not follow the bad company? What made um, you choose work instead of, you know, following Stephen's lead? Let me tell you, the mother that raised me, my friend, you would not think about following bad company. Because back in the days, if you said troops to your mother, my friend, you would get beaten. And it's not, you know, they're not going to beat you because they hate you, they're, be they're beating you to discipline you. Mm -hmm. You know, the time that I, I grew up, discipline was one of the most important things growing up. So if your mother sees that you are walking with a group of friends, that will put you in trouble, she will warn you, mm -hmm. you know, and if you disobey, then you will get licks. If you reach home, if school dismisses, let's say at three o'clock, and you reach home at four o'clock, you will get licks, because they tell you you have like 50, 40 minutes to reach home, why are you licked? Okay, you're jumping in the rain, you get the flu. My friend, you go get licks because do not jump <laughs> in the rain, I do not have money to go and get medication for you, you will get licks. So with all of this, I had that fear of not getting licks because the way we used to get licks, my friend, whatever that your parents got, they were beating you with it. They mm. get a broomstick, they beat you with it. They get a sleeper, they beat you with it. A pan, a frying pan, and you just do not, and your friends are outside watching, they're right. laughing at you. Right. So you don't want to be put to shame. So you rather, hey, I would listen. Mm -hmm. Okay? And then for you now, okay, even if that your mother is doing all of but you know inside of you, it is to help you. Okay? Not to destroy you. Mm -hmm. So then you would always want to do things to make your mother proud because for me, I was seeing how hard my mother was taking it. Mm -hmm. And back in the days, sometimes the parents used to let you know what they went through. Um, compared to the, a lot of parents to hide what they went through, you know, making the children believe that life is easy. Right. You know, but when you raise up and your mother telling you how hard she take it and you are seeing it for yourself, you would always want to not put your mother in shame, mm -hmm. okay, and try to raise up having a good name in society. Stanley, you had um, the worst part of it all, all right? You saw the ills of, um, of the gang life, I should say. Yes. Um, what made you want to change? Okay, what brought that change upon? Well, basically, my, my mom brought me to the YPG. Okay. She brought me. I didn't want her to go because I, I was a, a, a youth growing up, you know, playing football. I love football. Yeah? Okay, okay. And I was playing for a team. Mm -hmm. And every single Sunday I had a match. But that day was Mother's Day. So I said, you know, let me just go just to please her. Mm -hmm. I'll just go because she has been inviting me. Come, let's go. So I wanted to know what that YPG is all about. She invited me to. Mm -hmm. So when I arrived there, you know, I see the different stories of like people who came 
with a life worse than mine. Mm-hmm. And they change. And I see, okay, so if, if they can change, I can change also. And also the activities that the, the YPG had, mm-hmm. it caught my attention. Because also, I love football and they had football. Okay. That same Sunday, I had to go back with my friends to play football. But I, I, had to, I stay mm-hmm. and play football with them. So that already drew my attention. So you had different activities that appealed to you at the time. And that made you a lot more interested in partaking in the programs the YPG were offering. Yes. Apart from the football, what else made you stay? Well, also uh, because of the like, activities, like my talent also. Mm-hmm. There are different groups in the YPG that, had their, that draw my attention. And I, I end up staying. For example, um, I like to dance. Okay. So they had a culture group. So I joined that culture group and, you know, it motivated me. And also, as I said, the life transformations that I saw, mm-hmm. I said, okay, if that person can change, if she can change, if he can change, I also can change. So I started to push myself to learn more. How can I receive that transformation? What can I do for me to be changed, to transform? Because I know I, I grew up in a house with my mom alone mm-hmm. and also with my siblings. And it's very hard for her. And, you know, I, I think with myself. Then it, I came to the reason. If I am able to change, I will be able to help even my mother and my siblings. Right. So I started to see the change day after day. I didn't change overnight. But I started to continue coming to the YPG, hearing the, 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 you know, the messages that we receive. Mm-hmm. And I started to put to practice. And there I saw the change. Well, how did your friends take it? Because that's your biggest influence. Yes. All right. How did they take you not showing up for practice anymore, not playing football with them, mm-hmm. but you heading to this program religiously? Yes. So it was not easy. I received a lot of persecution because I started to engage myself in something like good, mm-hmm. I can say. Because at the time, what I was doing, I thought it was good. Mm-hmm. But I, from coming to the YPG, I found out I was doing something good. But my friends, they, they didn't like. So they just persecute me and say, ah, you are this, you are that. They started calling me the names mm-hmm. that they say Lucia News. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. <laughs> so I myself, I say, okay, they themselves not feeding me. Come, I know already my mother already taking it hard. They're not feeding me. They're not giving me school money. So I say, you know what? It's better I stay where I am. And then I continue engaging myself in the activities strong and strong and strong until today I see the change in my life. Any of them follow you? Yes. I have um, about three of them, that, and they're still today in the, the youth group. All right. Let's <laughs> take a quick break. And when we get back from the break, we are going to speak to uh, George Sinqua, uh, but we're going to speak to Platinum George. Yeah. <laughs> okay? We're going to chat to Platinum George because, like I said before, he was one of the more prolific mm-hmm. soccer artists in St. Lucia, destined to be the That's monarch right. at one time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right? And then we just saw him disappear. Okay. <laughs> we find out what happened and, of course, learn about his transformation. This is Issues and Answers, a production of the Government Information Service. I'm your host, Kendall Eugene. We'll take a quick break and be right back with our two guests from YPG. What's in the food you're eating? Do you really even know? All the chemicals and hormones used to accelerate their growth. All the artificial flavoring, sweeteners and colors too. We consume and we don't spare a thought for the damage that they'll do. No, think about the children. Think about the children. How will we save them? Chemicals and GMOs are not the solution. Use organic and join. Excessive agrochemical use, additives, and genetically modified foods are harmful to health and the environment. Join the good food revolution. Grow, buy, and consume organic. A message from Rise St. Lucia and the Ministry of Sustainable Development with funding from the GEF Small Grants Program, UNDP. The good food revolution. Welcome back to Issues and Answers, a production of the Government Information Service and NTN. I am your host, Kendall Eugene. With me, our guest from the YPG coordinator, Stanley Stephen, and a senior YPG member, George Simqua. A lot of y'all will see him and be like, 
have platinum, George. Yes, it is. That. <laughs> do you still call yourself platinum, George? Yeah, I, I still do, you know, because there are some places that I go when I say George Senkwa, you know, I saying, but George Senkwa, but it's like, but to me, you have another name. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I say, okay, yes, Platinum George. And I say, oh, okay, all right, you know that, okay. Where have you been? You know, so I still go as Platinum George, you know. Sometimes, you know, when I want to probably remind people mm -hmm. of, okay, um, where I started off, you know, because the name Platinum, it is, I mean, everybody knows it. Mm -hmm. But they do not know what Platinum George was going through. Right. You know, so. So I let's said. talk about that because we saw Platinum George, big hits, me, I. <laughs> All right? The, the Soka Cowboy. Yes, sir. Okay? Daddy. Yes, sir. <laughs> among others. And you also was, um, at a point in time, one of the top contenders for the crown. Yes, yes. All right? And I think St. Lucians are still angry at that year. May I the may I hear yes, that sir. you did not win the crown? If they could have had a riot on the Marshall Field that night, they would have had it because sure. they were angry platinum did not get that crown. Yes, sir. So you were basically on stardom rule, stardom level, but then we just did not hear from you anymore. What yeah. happened? Throughout my career, you know, I kept a lot inside of me because I was very unhappy. You know, um, I was basically trying to feel a happiness by living a life of pretend. Um, you know, when I got on the stage, it was for that brief moment, you know, I was basically somebody different. Because, you know, with, with music, I, you know, I always dress up for me, it was entertainment. Mm -hmm. That's why I put different um, costumes on me, you know, to make people happy, um, entertain them. Before I go up on stage, I would, I would drink, I would smoke just to get a little high, you know. But after leaving the stage, I would get back to reality that I am still unhappy. You know, I am not happy with the way that my life is going, mm -hmm. you know, financially that I wanted to be somewhere different. Um, and what took a lot of people by surprise, I did not like the attention. I did not like the fame. You know, and it took people like, how you mean you don't know? I tell them like, it was through the depression that I felt, there are times I just want to be alone. Mm -hmm. I, don't want, I don't want to hear people calling me, you know, and what really was hard on me, sometimes when you go, especially when you're famous, you go to a certain place and somebody see you, my friend, everybody start calling you and to come and sign autograph and like for me, I just did not like it. Mm -hmm. um, and it all went back when the way that I grew up you know, with all of this anger, with all of this pain that I, I kept in me, and I started moving from different relationships, thinking that, okay, I would find probably love will, will change me, but in the relationship, it was sometimes even worse, mm -hmm. because sometimes end up in a relationship where the parents, the family don't like you, you understand, and that makes the, the depression even worse, fighting for I respect, I would say, mm -hmm. from the family, mm -hmm. fighting from love from that spouse, you know, fighting to, to be seen, but it was just not happening the way that I wanted it okay. to happen. Okay. So that, when did you realize it was actually depression you were going through? When I entered into the, the YPG, because for me it was, for me it was just something normal. Mm. You know, today I'm just not in my mood. You know, like as many people say, today I just don't want nobody to trouble me. Or today I'm not in my mood today to talk to nobody. Or I'll just lock myself in the, in the room. But when I entered the YPG, and as um, Mr. Stephen said, hearing what people were going through, you know, and actually letting the, the youth know, explaining the symptoms of depression, mm -hmm made me realize that throughout these years, I was facing depression. And it's like I'm saying, but, but how can a grown man like me, I mean, for me, this is life. Mm -hmm. This is mm -hmm. what life is. Mm -hmm. There are times that it will be good. There are times it will be bad. You know, they have to, that is what I thought, you know. And then it really hit me when my son started feeling depressed too. And I did not even know. I believe that I was doing the best to raise my son, giving him everything that he needs, you know, and when my son 
gave his testimony that he was trying to commit suicide. That's when I got to know. So you had no idea that he was even going through these services? No, because uh, for me, he was, my son was basically like me, calm, quiet like me. Mm -hmm. You know, so obviously like father, like son. That's how people, people say it. So for me, it was not, I did not see a problem because he, he did not need anything. Mm -hmm. He eats what he wants. So if today that he wants, let's say my son wants KFC or, or Domino's, and I am not there, my sister will get it for him. Mm -hmm. My brothers will get it for him. My mother, they, like, there's always somebody, if I am not there at the time, to get whatever that he needs. Right. My son will wake up in the, in the middle of the night, probably eight, nine in the night, go to the kitchen, open the fridge and eat. But what happens when he said that at that time, he was walking in the house when we thought was food he was going to look for. He was planning to kill himself. Wow. And nobody knew. How did you feel when you heard that? When I heard that, imagine, I was standing next to my son and I just got cold. You know, and I'm saying that he's saying it, but I am just going back in time, you know, actually remembering for sure that I, I, I noticed that he was going back and forth in the house, but mm -hmm. I thought he was going for food, you know? And then my sister called me once, telling me that they got a message on his phone that he sent to a friend saying that he wants to kill himself. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, imagine I stand up there, I'm saying, really? You know, I'm saying, I, I don't even know how to approach my son. From that day, from the time my son gave that testimony, I never asked him any questions. I never said a word to him, like, you know, after I get there, like, we know we go in a corner, we go home. Mm -hmm. I was so surprised that up to a day like today, I had never said a word to him. Because I do not want, I not want him to feel that, you know, that I'm going to pressure him. Or I'm trying to be hard on him. Or judging him. Right, because, mm -hmm. okay, if you uh, parents today, your child try to kill themselves, the first thing you do, in all the panic, you will try to be rough with them, mm -hmm. rough them up. Like why this, are you, you doing? Sleep out. Right. Mm -hmm. Why are you trying to do them kind of things? And you never tell me about this. And to them, getting to know about this. Mm -hmm. So at that point, I did not say anything. Mm -hmm. I did not say a word to him, because I noticed that through the YPG, he opened up. He didn't open up to me, mm -hmm. but he found someone in there that he could have opened up to. And when he opened up to them, it made him feel more comfortable with himself to speak about it now. So the YPG is like a family. Yes. yes. Okay. And a place where you basically have a safe avenue to come and speak out. Right. Um, do you all take it out of the building? For example, go in and minister in schools, in different youth groups, etc. Yes, we do. We go through um, well, whatever, as long as the school permits us to come, mm -hmm. we come. You know, and as we say, we do not come to the schools to come and make you like all religious and so you know, most importantly is what the child is going through, okay? And sometimes you have, you have counselors who try their best, but sometimes they still cannot break the ice with that student. Mm -hmm. And what we do is find what that child loves to do, okay? And um, a lot of mistakes that a lot of people make, if the child confides in you about something, you go and tell somebody else. Mm -hmm. So now the trust that that child already put in you, you have already lost it. Right. right. So now what we do, we, make, we build a relationship with the students. That even if that you say something to us, if it's, well, let's say if that is something that is very serious that we have to speak to your parents, we will. Mm -hmm. But for us now to find out, get to the root of the problem, we have to find a way to make you feel comfortable. I um, got some footage from... Uh, our our um, PIO and um, she told me you need to show this while you do the interview with the two gentlemen so we're going to try to get that clip right now it's with the two of you yeah. okay probably I'm um, just coming from ministering or going to minister mm -hmm. so we'd like to show that clip right now if we have it already um, just take a look at that one and after you will tell me <laughs> what went on and how were you received by the individuals. Okay. Okay. Sure. Hello, everyone. We just finished speaking to the students, but not just speak. We showed the testimony, Mr. George, and some other testimonies. And if you like us to join you at your school, you can just leave at the bottom of this video the name of your school, and we are going to be in contact with your principal in order to, to show you how it is possible for you to change and be a better youth of this country of nation. All right. See you guys. 
help schools. Tell us about that initiative. Basically, uh, we help all these students. And uh, this help project, as you can see on our sheets, mm -hmm. it says we will help, but don't judge. And we have been seeing a lot of situations occurring in school, even before this year, mm -hmm. as we have been hearing a lot of things happening in the school. Even before this year, we have already started this work in the school because we know how it's important with the youth. Because the youth today, they are strong mm -hmm. and they have efforts to do anything. And that is why we are targeting these schools because uh, we want to help the students. And as you can see, the, the clip we just showed a while ago, we were in the core of secondary school. Mm -hmm. uh, the students receive us very well. Uh, even the principal also, Mr. Andrew, he received us very well. Excellent. And we shared, um, even Mr. George, he, he shared his testimony, his story of how everything started and how we end up changing. Mm -hmm. Also, we had another uh, member of the YPG. I don't know if you know him. Um, his past name was Mad Ellie. Oh, yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. Mad yeah. Ellie is another one I keep yeah. saying. Mad <laughs> Ellie, you, another <laughs> artist that you, we all knew and love, and he yes. went the, the way of the church. Uh, we're not mad at Mad Ellie for that. Yes. <laughs> so not at all. Basically, he was there on that day also sharing his life so because he grew up in a gang also. Mm -hmm. And we showed to the students. We didn't just go and talk to them because a lot of people have been speaking to the youth and they themselves not giving airs. But they want to see how they can change. Mm -hmm. And this is what the YPG, the HELP project, we do. We show to the youth how they are able to change, how they are able to be transformed, a better youth in their school, mm -hmm. in their home, in the community, and above all for St. Lucia. We find a lot, of, a lot of young people, sorry, rebelling against mm -hmm. anything to do with change, especially when it comes in the um, form of a church group. Mm -hmm. But it seems different with YPG. Yeah. Quickly tell us how it is different and um, what you can now do for other communities. So basically, the difference that the youth power group has. Mm -hmm. I know that other youth group has also. We ha they have the activities, they engage the youth in, in sports and this kind of thing. But above all, it has to be based on the spiritual level also. Mm -hmm. Because the change starts within the, the person. Because you can say, okay, uh, I'll change my dressing. And it will not determine that you are changed. Mm -hmm. You are changing the outside. But first, they change need to come inside of this person. Because a clean mind brings forth a clean action. Mm -hmm. So if this youth have a mentality of cleanliness, or this youth put their mind to do something cleanly, they are going to see their actions day after day started to be real. Okay, the change will be The there. change will start okay. Excellent. Through, the, through the inside, and then it shows on the on outside. outside. George, what about you? That's before we close off. Yes, um, I will say we... The way that we approach the youth, we also let them know that even if that you are not finding the love that you are seeking, but God loves you. Mm -hmm. All right? And you can do everything with his guidance, just like me. You know, I did not know what love is or how to love somebody, even love myself, when I understood how much God loves me. Mm -hmm. You know, and this is what we teach youth. As I'm just even said, the change has to come from inside of you. Mm -hmm. Because you could get a lot of people who pretend that they change. Okay, um, I was getting jokes because my, I used to put them kind of shoes. I started doing these shoes, these clothes, but yet still, I am still behaving the same way. Mm -hmm. But if you do not change your mentality, and not only for the youth, also for we who are helping the youth, if we do not change our mentality, we cannot help them. It makes no sense pressure in a child and then that child is saying you are pressuring me about something but you are worse than me. Yeah. So the change yeah. also has to come from us as well. Excellent. How can individuals learn more about the Help Schools project that uh, is currently ongoing and of course the Youth Power Group? Yeah, so basically, uh, the Youth Power Group, we have different platforms. We have the Facebook platform, we have YouTube, we have TikTok and uh, everything that the youth like. Mm -hmm. So we engage the youth in things that they love. And throughout the year 2023 and even in the beginning of 2024, we have come up with a lot of activities so that the youth can engage themselves in, mm -hmm. so that they can be occupied. Because if the youth are there 
and have nothing to do. Of course, they will find something to do, which is bad. Yeah, idle hands. Idle hands. Mm -hmm. So uh, we, we, the YPG, we, we work with the activities so that we can get the youth mm -hmm. involved. And from there, we already, what, we already you know, help them spiritually also, mm -hmm. but above all, for them to have a clean mindset on what they need to do in order to be a better youth. That's why we did last year, we had the um, Save a Youth event. Uh, I don't know if they, they got the picture, but we sent mm -hmm. some of the material. We had a Save a Youth event. That event was massive. Mm -hmm. was great. It had a great turnout where the youth gathered. We had the football competition, and we saw a lot of boys, boys that I didn't even see before. Mm -hmm. Attending. <laughs> yeah. 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 All right. Boys I didn't even see before I saw they were at that event. Okay. That Save a Youth event. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, so if we want to become members now, just before we, we close off, um, how can we become a member of YPG? Where, where do I have to go? What do I have to do? Well, basically, our office is uh, located 25 Brothers Street. Street. Our number is 730-4040. Mm -hmm. I'll say it again, whoever watching <laughs> us. 730-4040. You can send me a text message. I'll be answering. Mm -hmm. Send me a text message or you can call straight or you can call on WhatsApp. We are going to be attending this person that is interested to join the youth power group mm -hmm. or to be part of it or maybe they don't want to be part of the youth group but they need help they can get in contact with us and for sure we are going to be helping these youth no matter who you are if you are from another religion no matter we are going to be there to help them excellent well george stanley i want to mm -hmm. say thank you very much for joining us um anything else you want to add george before we say goodbye um also, we, we send in a, an, an email to um, all the schools as well, where we do mm -hmm. a prayer at 10 to 7 with all the youth. Okay. Yes. So they just press the link. We do a prayer for them before they leave their home. You know, so um, I feel most of the schools are already on board. Mm -hmm. You know, and if you are interested in taking part in this, you could even contact us and we could send you the link. The link. For, for your schools. Excellent. Thank you very much. George Sinkwa, senior member of YPG, and uh, Stanley Stephen, a coordinator of the Youth Power Group. I want to say thank you for joining Issues and Answers today, yes. and good luck in your future endeavors. Mm -hmm. Folks, this has been Issues and Answers, a production of the Government Information Service. Your host, Kendall Eugene. Thank you for viewing. Bye-bye now. <laughs>